Check this out. AC input 100 to 250 volts. Howdy folks, doing a rather important update video here today to our little Pros Kit SS331 desoldering station. I'd done a review on this a few days back. I'll link to it below in the description if you wanted to have a peek at it. Uh, no, it hasn't blown up or crapped the bed yet. In fact, it's been working really well and I've been getting a lot better at using the desoldering gun. Practice makes perfect, right? Really happy with it. In the original review though, I had mentioned a few problems that I had with it and two of them are going to be addressed today. One is a big one. This is kind of a good news update. I was removing the switch from the back. It's a bench top unit. I don't like having the switch in the back. If you wanted to try this yourself too, it's an easy mod. There's two obvious locations. One is beside the GX connector and the vacuum input or above the vacuum input. And that would place our little power switch either right here or between these two. And again, you're a call if you wanted to do this in which location. I think I'm going to go above here. Still haven't completely decided. Wiring the switch, super easy as well. Here's our AC inputs to our switch mode power supply. They're long enough that one will reach to the front switch on the front. And the other one, of course, will still reach to the back C13 plug. And then we're just I'm going to have to make a longer pigtail to run from the hot of the C13 inlet to the switch up at the front now. So, super easy to wire it. In the process of taking all this apart though to uh, do this, this is where our good news <laughs> update is. The power supply has this cover over it, okay, and it's mounted on the bottom of the unit in, what, in this orientation like this, so in a vertical orientation. In this position, there's a very important sticker that is covered up. Check this out. AC input 100 to 250 volts. So yes, this is a universal voltage switch mode power supply for the input voltage. Accepts the full range of voltage, 50 or 60 hertz. I even checked this number out online, the ZD P150 power supply, and confirmed it. So regardless of what's said on the unit, being only for 220 to 240, regardless of what's said on the box and having separate model numbers, all I call horseshit on all of it. You can get the 220 version and run it on 110 fine. The heat up time, everything is functioning perfect. The reason I have the 220 volt version, uh, came with the Australian plug as you saw in the review, is that's, that's the only one that bang good stocks and it's really the only one that most places stock. So unlike me, you don't have to waste your money also getting one of these things. I, Paid 30 bucks for this step up transformer, just takes 120 and steps it up to 240. Didn't have to do that at all. All you'll have to get if you get the 240 volt version is just find yourself a C13 power cord with the uh, North American plug on the end. It's that simple. Well, I've got it apart here. I thought we'd take a quick peek at the switch mode power supply in case, because uh, there's a couple of interesting things I noticed on it that a few people might be interested in. Uh, the input, the AC input side, lots of filtering in it. I don't know about the quality of these capacitors, SanCon, uh, but nice, nice amount of filtering. The MOSFET and the voltage regulator uh, securely mounted on the aluminum case, which is acting as a nice heat sink using ample amounts of thermal paste and thermal sheet. So we've got good thermal conductivity there. Uh, optically isolated with an optocoupler. Uh, normal switch mode power supply stuff that you'd see. The interesting thing though, however, is the heating element for the uh, desoldering gun. It's being controlled by a, a MOSFET that's right in the power supply, not somewhere on the control board. So I thought that was kind of interesting. On the control unit itself, let's zoom out here again. Another kind of interesting thing. This lower board has got these two 5 watt 1 ohm resistors. Found out these are wired in series. And what they're doing is they're regulating the voltage for the uh, motor and the fan, which are both 12 volts. Our power supply is outputting 18. So it's just going through those to uh, make the voltage safe for our motor, our pump motor and our fan. That was another thing in the review I had mentioned was the odd uh, fan placement being on the back here. No big deal there. It's exhausting out of these holes. 
but there's no intake louvers anywhere on the unit to draw air in. It's just pulling it out. I didn't really see the value in that. Also, the holes themselves have got some flow-through plastic partially covering the holes from the molding process, so it might not hurt. Well, we've got it apart to uh, drill those out or just use an awl to, to get those cleared out. When I put this back together, what I may do is put the fan on this side. So it's drawing air out this side and it will be pulling it in then on this side across the power supply. I thought if I'm in here, I may as well do that. So I got the beast pretty much all back together. I've decided to leave the one half cover off of the power supply. Figure it might give a little bit better cooling. Yeah, could have shielding issues now, RF noise, who knows. Uh, but we're gonna try it. Most power supplies don't have a cover on them when they're in enclosures. And what I wanted to show though here is how lucky I got with this switch placement. The tab connectors that go on the tab pins and this is fit, they are just going to slide between the two exhaust, or well, the exhaust outlet, and I think this is the second stage inlet for the vacuum pump. So, yeah, I got off lucky there. So, if you were going to do yours, uh, yeah, if I was going to do this again, I think I'd put it down on the bottom here because there is more room back there. But it's not going to be an issue, it will fit. It's just, she's tight. Moment of truth time. What I thought we'd do is first run it off a 240 and watch the heat up time. When I first turn it on, I've got it set to 380. We'll, uh, we'll do a timer, we'll just fast forward through it, but it'll give us the time uh, that the 240 takes. Just to show this is putting out 240. Got the old meter out. My pause in the way, I guess. But she's reading 240. So, plug this in, and we'll hit start, stop as we turn this on. So, one minute, eight seconds roughly. Now, I'm going to let it cool right down for about half an hour. And we'll try it again on 110. No more step-up transformer. Just plug right into the unit. Plug it into a 120 outlet. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll turn the unit on and start the stopwatch roughly at the same time. So here we go. And there we are, 1 minute 8, 1 minute 9, same as before. So these things are definitely dual voltage. And if you want to try to throw a switch in there or down there, fairly easy to do as we saw. Cheers, folks. Don't buy an adapter. Save your money.